My name is Kendall McCoy, and I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm here in Jacksonville, Florida. I was arrested in 2015 um, in August. I was working a part-time job at the time and um, I was going through a real deflated dark time. I had lost one of my full-time jobs and a lot of my thought processes during that time wasn't as concrete enough to make formal and professional decisions. So based on instinct and irrational decisions, irrational behavior, I got a felony for shoplifting and grand theft. Met one guy in there and he, um, he was talking about the crime that he did and um, how the judge had told him he was a career criminal and she felt that he wasn't getting out. So the turning point was, it made me aware that when somebody says something to you in their idea of what your future is, it's your choice to take on that ownership and succumb to what they're saying or to take what they're saying for face value and and build off that. And the guy just didn't build off it. He said, yeah, man, my, 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 my uh, judge says I'm a career criminal. I'm all right with that. You know, he just kind of flatlined and became comfortable with the expectation of someone else expecting him not to do anything in his life. And him being 10 feet away from me saying that, it, it really woke me up. I mean, through my transition through Katrina for those three to four days, seeing uh, bodies washed through the streets and different things, it just was a great awareness to realize that you were still alive. I was in a relationship with a lady at the time, and she lived in Jacksonville and I lived in New Orleans. and she was the only way I could communicate. That was the only person I could make a call into my phone and that was the only phone number I could make a call successfully to reach out. And that was how it got started. And then fast forward about a 22 hour ride straight. Um, they encouraged straight on the radio because they didn't want you to stop at any of the rest stops or anywhere where you felt you might've been vulnerable to being in that type of tragedy at that time. And I uh, got to Jacksonville and uh, that was my first day in Jacksonville as a resident going forward. And I brought myself down there, man, and let the pride windows down and listen to someone trying to tell me what I could do to help myself get back on track and became a um, student of the program. So I'm glad to be a successful uh, staff member with Operation New Hope now. The front side of it being a client, but now to be a staff member where I can um, impact more lives in the reentry spectrum. So one of the inspiring things for me kind of is, is um, thinking about an arts collaboration with some symposium to kind of connect the dots on reentry, arts, and, and mental health. But in the next five years, man, I want to be one of the top reentry folks in the nation. And right now I'm studying those people online. They don't know me yet, but whoever's out there is a reentry specialist in the nation, I need to meet them. How could I look in the mirror and tell myself I'm my own biggest competition and really believe it? And not let the folder or the paperwork dictate who I think I am and give myself a daily dose of resetting back to zero every day. So changing my idea of what the felony impact was to my career that I worked so hard for, I had to forgive myself. Yes, I made a mistake. Yes, I brought a scarlet letter to my family. However, the end is not here. This too shall pass and you can start again.